Today, we're going to talk about five reasons individuals are leaving the church and why you should stay. Let's get started. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us in this video. Before we get started, please take a moment to support this channel by liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell. We are currently participating in an experiment to see if we can grow this channel to 1 million subscribers in just one year. We want to demonstrate to the world that we're serious about our faith, we're serious about studying God's word, and we want you to be a part of the journey that will allow us to grow to 1 million subscribers. So please help us break YouTube's algorithm and be a part of the journey. We're going to be posting videos every single day, and you don't want to miss a thing. Now, recently, I just finished reading a book by Jim Davis called The Great Dechurching, Who's Leaving, Why Are They Going, and What Will It Take to Bring Them Back? In this book, I found some of the latest data on what's going on in the church, and basically there are two different categories we should be concerned with. It is first the unchurched population, and then there is the dechurched population. In the unchurched population, there are individuals who have never been in church, they've never been a part of a religious community, they don't know what it means to be a Christian. They don't know any of the common thoughts, ideas, and doctrines that we hold to. They're completely new to the experience of Christianity. But then there's the de-church, which has grown substantially in response to COVID. Many people who were a part of church communities or organizations or religious community have backed away from it and separated from it because they felt that there's no real value there. So what we're dealing with is no longer just the unchurched, but now we're looking at the unchurched and the dechurched. And now we want to figure out how can we show individuals the importance of being a part of the church community and essentially a part of the family of God. Now, there are five reasons why individuals don't go to church. The first thing is that there's a lack of community. The latest data realizes that individuals are either leaving the church because they don't find that their friends are going or because they find that there is no true love or value from being there. Individuals feel that they're out of place. They feel that there are some things that are happening that doesn't allow them to fit in. And so essentially, they just stop going. The data shows that there is serious value whenever a person can go to a place and feel like they belong and feel like they're a part of it. So one of the things that people are interested in is being a part of community, whether that is religious or non-religious, that they feel they belong in. And that is something that we have not been able to find among many churches and therefore people are leaving because of it. The second thing is there's a lack of confidence in what is called organized religion. Many traditional norms are shifting across the world, particularly in the United States. And while institutions have generally represented certain values or certain positions Many people are seeing that their feelings and their thoughts about these certain values or traditions are kind of changing. They're shifting. And while people's values are shifting and changing, the church's values or maybe their traditions are staying the same. Consequently, people feel that the values, the traditions are more important than the people. And therefore, people are disassociating or walking away from places that feel that their values are more important than the people. What we're finding is that churches are having to find a way to emphasize the importance of humanity over the importance of being right or being on the right side of a particular view or opinion. And we find that this is something that is causing people to really walk away, albeit with the attempt of the church or the institution to stay true to its core beliefs and values. So this is something that is a very sensitive conversation among many people. But at the end of the day, what we have to look at is we're losing people. People are not following Christ because of this conflict and this tension. So we have to figure out how to address this biblically and sensitively with individuals who are concerned with these matters. Third reason is that there are moral and ethical issues. That is, the church is seen as being a place where they're supposed to be high moral standards. So it's a very interesting thing where there is this sort of flexibility on values, but there's also this expectation for us to be moral beings. And if we're going to see any morality, many people feel that it should be seen within the church. Unfortunately, we have not always exemplified the height of morality that meets the expectations of people who are within our community. And consequently, individuals feel that they'll do better by leaving or disassociating. 
So you have those who are unchurched who will say they're just a bunch of hypocrites. And then there are those who are de that might say, I expected more out of them. And therefore, the lack of trust in the individuals who are involved or, to be quite frank, the disappointment that one experiences when viewing this sort of thing causes them to walk away from it. The fourth reason individuals are leaving the church is the digital technology, the digital revolution that has occurred. The idea that we can participate in community without being in community has become a significant opinion by many people. Many people feel that they have participated in some sort of community whenever they watch it on YouTube or stream it online. So there is no real participation, but there is viewership. In fact, many studies have shown that online giving has gone up significantly since COVID because more people are staying home then they are frequenting the building and being a part of genuine community. So a matter of convenience, you know, is an issue. And that leads us to our fifth reason. Individuals are simply too busy and they don't see that church is a high importance or of a high priority in their lives. There are other things that they can find themselves doing. And because of the availability of streaming online, individuals are now finding that they can stream online and do things um, while they're worshiping or while they are participating in community because it is more convenient and it is of lesser importance than it has been in the past. Well, there are five responses I want to give to these five reasons why individuals are leaving the church. And this is why I ultimately want you to stay because there is something that you gain from being in a Christian community that you will not gain if you are outside of Christian community. The first thing is that we find in Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through verse 47, and in Acts chapter 4, verse 32 through verse 37, that Christian community is the most meaningful example of community that we find in any space possible. We find that the greatest example of community is exampled by the church. It is a place where people belong, where people not only go to a church building to fellowship, but they essentially do life together. In the first century, individuals would come together and they would build neighborhoods together. So it wasn't this idea of an institution or even just simply a community by our own definition, but think of it more as a neighborhood where homes are being shared, where food is being shared, resources are being shared, and people are living in commonality. They are living with the same means, with the same purpose, the same vision, the same heart. They are one with each other. And quite frankly, in our society, we crave these sort of things, but perhaps we're too individualistic to even attempt to do what we read and see in this passage. The beautiful thing about Christian community is that when we come together in Christian community, we are coming together in the name of Jesus Christ, and our identities is based on the person of Jesus Christ. And you can't have any better community than that because all of the other things that leads us to division are now placed to the side and we are brought together on one simple thing and that is Jesus Christ. That is the beauty of Christian community and it is something that everyone wants but perhaps don't feel that is possible. What I wanna tell you today is that it is possible. The second thing is the lack of confidence in organized religion. In Matthew 23, we find that Jesus lost confidence in institutions as well. The tradition of Judaism was one that existed during Jesus' day, and it was the institution that influenced people's lives. And Jesus was very critical of the people who were in control of the institution because they did things that were not uh, compliant or in line with what the Father wanted for those who would enter into the kingdom. Essentially, after rebuking the leaders in Matthew chapter 23, uh, in verse 37 of that same chapter, Jesus begins to pronounce the end of this nation, the end of this institutional way of approaching God. The entire institution was going to collapse and fall apart because Jesus was creating something new. What if I told you that God is just as upset with institutions as you are? There are those institutions, not all, but there are those institutions that have done things that jeopardize individuals' ability to see him as fully as he desires to be seen. And the response that God gives to that is not to run away from community or from him, but to come closer, come closer to him because he has the solution. Maybe you have been disappointed by 
institutions in the past. But the solution is the more disappointed you are in institutions, the further you should run to God and believe and know that there are people in the world who are just as hungry for God and just as disappointed in institutions as you are. And what we all should be doing is coming together to be the body that God has called us to be. The other issue that we found individuals uh, citing for leaving the church is moral and ethical issues. And what we find is that in the Bible, it teaches us that these things should not happen. Essentially, what we have done is we've made excuses for why ethical, unethical practices have happened or, or why immoral things happen in the church. And really, there's just there are just no excuses. In fact, in Ephesians chapter five, verse one through verse 20, we find Paul admonishing the church in Ephesus to do things that are in line with the spirit, to put off the works of the flesh because they that do these things cannot inherit the kingdom of Christ. So while we have done a great job at trying to hide and cover the things that are not acceptable, what the Bible teaches is that we should run away from those things. Don't do them. They shouldn't be found among us, not even one time. And so rather than saying, as some will say, those are hypocrites, others will say they are disappointing, what we should say is let's find a way to be the community that God has called us to be. Let's live in this reality that scripture has painted for us. And let's be the agents of change rather than those who will walk away and not participate in any community at all. Because the standard is there, we just have to meet it. Now, the fourth thing is the digital technology that has driven us away from actual community that allows us to feel that we are participating in community as long as we are watching it online. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 through verse 25 shows us that the purpose of coming together in community is to admonish and motivate one another in acts of love and good works. It is used for the purpose of encouraging one another and understanding the times that we're living in. And so when we come together, we are not to neglect the meeting of one another, but we are to embrace genuine fellowship and community because we understand there's some tangible things that we are to get when we are next to each other. We're rubbing shoulders. We're working together. It is our way of participating and encouraging one another to continue the work that God has assigned for us as we engage in the problems of our day and expect the manifestation of God in our own time. And the last thing is that being in Christian community is just not a priority for most people. We are far too busy. We are far too involved with other things in our life. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 through verse 2, it shows us that we should understand the importance of today and that what we do in this moment is what is going to determine the rest of our lives. While many of us feel that we can put it off to later, or, you know, there are other things that are more important. Essentially, what we find in scripture is that the most important thing in our lives is our relationship with God and our participation in the thing that God is calling us to do. This is why in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul says that we are partners and we're begging individuals to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't ignore this gift that God has given us in Jesus Christ. He says, indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Right now is the moment. Right now is the time. This is very important, and it cannot be pushed aside for other things. So, friends, I hope this is helpful. These five reasons are very legitimate reasons, but what we find is that in God's word, there are five responses that we find. And I want you to go back and read all of these scriptures on your own to see how the Bible addresses these concerns, and it helps us to understand why we should be a part of some Christian community. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've gained something out of this. If you did, please leave a comment, share it to some of your friends, like this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell because we'll be back tomorrow with another video and hopefully help you on your journey with Christ. Until next time, thank you for watching and God bless.